Every afternoon on their way home from school, the children used to play in the garden of the selfish giant. Is that the garden where we go and play? No, darling, this one's much larger and lovelier than that. It's soft green grass. There's grass where we go. Ah, yes, but are there 12 peach trees that burst into delicate blossoms of pink and pearl every springtime and bear rich fruit in the autumn? Are there, Mama? Oh, I don't think there are, Cyril, no. Would you um, hand me a matchstick, darling? I'll put this hussar's head back on. Thank you. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop their games to listen. How happy we are here, they said to each other. I don't know how they could be happy if there was a giant. Ah, but there wasn't, you see, not yet. He was away visiting a friend. You're always away. Yes, but I only go for a night or two at a time and I always come back. Whereas this giant, the one whose garden it was, he'd been away for seven years, staying with an ogre in Cornwall. Now, after seven years, when he'd said all he had to say, because his conversation was very limited, he decided to return home to his own castle. And when he arrived and found the children playing in his garden, he was very angry. What are you doing here? He cried. And all the children ran away. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant. And I won't allow anyone to play in it except myself. So we built a high wall all around, put up a large notice board on which was written in capital letters, trespassers will be prosecuted. Arthur, you're trespassing. Cyril will now eat you. It's Mr. Ross, sir, with Mr. Gray. Heavens, I must fly. The horses of Apollo are pawing impatiently at the gates. I beg your pardon? Papa must go. We will go back and finish the story. Of course I will. Come on, Cyril, it's almost tea time. <laughs>